Mm-hmm. You look different, so the oh, ones you God. already wanted yeah. is like, oh, oh that, what's good? Yeah. She, but there's the great. older sisters of friends, so double that, dip, all, and yeah, school, all yeah, of them, and then, kids, yeah. and then the ones that was like three, two or three grades behind you that at the time you was like, nah. Yeah. But now it's it's twenty one and, and twenty four. Yeah. You're like, oh, what's good? So those ones, you, and then meeting people randomly when you running errands. I mean, there was a girl who worked at the fries behind my house. I was in line. I said what I had to say. I was leaving. She was like, so you're not gonna ask for my number? Like, oh, all right. She came over there that night. Yeah. So it was just like, cool. Well, um, we, we just started off kind of wild. We didn't even introduce. I uh, know. <laughs> and we're talking like, this yeah, is my father. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is my dad. Yeah. Uh, I'm just listening. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. this is my dad. We started off, Gary started us off. But uh, uh, it was a conversation that we had prior to how we ended up with uh, yeah, the cameras rolling. Women's. Yeah. How do we find. The you know our roster and our history with women. How did we come come about meeting them? And Keon has always been like very intentional about being in black spaces. That's always been your so. Even when you went to Montana, like whatever you had your experience there. But when you came back home, you going to the clubs, doing the thing. But you also hooking up with old work, which was built on your relationships through high school and through junior college, which has always been you know what I mean, very Afrocentric. Um, and then Keenan. Has his has his story. Keena got homesick <laughs> after one Keenan year. Keena went to a black college and got homesick. Keena went to a black college, miss white family. people, and had to come home. I yeah. mean, my my experience isn't with white people. That's your experience. But like, <laughs> <laughs> I just I just missed home. That was all it really was. But also, like, I've always just been way more comfortable with black people. Like, it's just way more comfortable. Yeah, I'm equally uncomfortable around everyone. <laughs> <laughs> equal, equal across the board. Yeah, I just. And I and I and and being like out, I was never like comfortable with the white girls. Like I'll smash. Mm-hmm. I was never comfortable with like, hey, let's go somewhere. Let's not. Interesting. <laughs> there it let's, is. Let's not. I feel like I feel like Gary's chest gets bigger when he's he's like, let's go somewhere. He's just like, that's all the fun. Ah, 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 let's go. In. Let's go out. You have, you, have no, you have no idea the shame that I feel on a day to day basis. The shame. <laughs> The goddamn shame and embarrassment to my people, <laughs> to my to my ancestors. You have no idea what I go through every day. I think it's all talk, but all right, man. <laughs> no, no, but I, I I do like entertain this question. Like, how do you like if you're very hyper specific about what you like and your preference? If I'm like I like black women, how do you go about meeting black women as an adult before the act? Before the act, no, I think you just like it's either church. Or the or the club essentially the clubs or your social I think you're, your or social circles. circles I mean also too you got it yeah. there's there's so many out in LA there's or so fries many. electronics <laughs> there's you know so many, like it's just it's random there's, there's a lot of the world you gotta be out in the world yeah. there's a lot of events that go shot. on in LA that you can just go to like especially like now you can literally just type in a, like follow certain people or follow certain events and they're putting on black events for black people to kind of meet and, and network at. And it's just like it's it's a lot easier, especially now. It's a lot now. easier now. Yeah. It's but, a lot easier. But even, I, oh, good. Sorry, I'm sorry. Go I was gonna say, but even before that, I was just like I just naturally gravitated. Like we would just, yeah. it, it's like I just knew where to go. I don't know. I can't tell you. I just knew where to go. Mm-hmm. Like, I just knew where we were. Because you, you know just found, you talked to one person that looked yeah. like you, and then it just it's like okay, we we parents now. I'm meeting. You go, you drop your kids off. Yeah. Hey, that's how I found out about all the sports. I talked to one parent, introduced me to more parents. Mm-hmm. Blah blah. Now, but you know, this year there's one more black parents. And without even, it it was intentional, but it wasn't like, they had an ice cream social at the school. Uh, I look up and it's me, the other three black dads and the Filipino dude, mm-hmm. all the white dudes over here. And one of the dudes walked up to me, he's like, man, I don't want to be weird, but I've been trying to talk to you since the first day of school. And I was like, no, I saw you too. I just didn't want to be weird. Yeah. So we started talking, he's like, I'm gonna go talk to the other guy, which is the other black dad. Yeah. So we all talk, we exchange information. You know what I mean? Uh, talk to kids get up. It's just a natural. And I get that. You know, but my question and my question would be, why not just move to a black neighborhood? This is just where we move. Well, yeah. we move for the school, obviously. Okay. Right. That school, like everybody's trying to get to the school. Everyone. Okay. That's why they move. They like all the people that go that we met just moved into this neighborhood recently, mm-hmm. but it's all for the school. Like they were like, I heard this is the best school, so we they were literally one person 
could have moved into a house a block over, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't have made the district. So they chose a different house. Like everybody was trying to go to the school. Okay. So that's why people move here. And honestly, me and Cotty were looking at we wanted to move to uh, what's the we just couldn't afford it. The up uh, Barbara Jarvis School. No, but that area. Where, where, oh, Ladera Heights. Ladera Heights. Where, where there? Yeah. yeah, we wanted to go. But it was like, bro, I okay. can't. I can't speak. Right. So we tried. Okay. <laughs> we, 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 we tried. <laughs> and she was, had to she, settle. Was, she was adamant on like, I want to move to like Inglewood. I want to mm -hmm. move to. That's what I. Uh, that's where my. That's where my. That's where your dad's head goes. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, no, I guess, Inglewood's not saying Inglewood you grew up in. Yeah, I was gonna say to bring to bring your dad in because we kind of yeah. just been neglecting him. Right. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm good because I'm, you know, but, I'm listening. But it's not like, saying Inglewood you grew up in. But I was say I was I was gonna say like even from um your perspective from like the schools you came from and. Did you was that a, was that a goal of yours too? But like, yo, I want to get my kids into a certain type of uh, area in school away yeah, from I actually, either. I I didn't want them growing up in L.A. So I'm like, I'm out of here. You know, I didn't want them to have to experience the the stuff I did, mm -hmm. the whole gang affiliation stuff. Yeah. Um, I do think from the success of black uh, athletes is better in the inner city. Yeah. I think if we'd have went, if he'd have went to Westchester or anything Ooh. out here, he, he's out of here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I do sure. hate that part of it. Mm. But as far as mm. non-sports, you know, I wanted them to be more well-rounded mm. versus you know going to school. Because like when we grew up, it was, it was it was just gang affiliation everywhere, every school, everything. So I was like, I don't want that for them. So let me get a body. I didn't know the Bay Area at all. You know, um, I moved. I moved to the Bay Area because. I moved to San Diego and it was too close to LA. So I'm like, oh, I, I'm too close. So let me go a little bit further up. You so, know? so even with like, even with you going, because I, I, you remember you said you went to Taft in the Valley. So I, can, right. I grew up in the Valley, so I know that area. You, you wasn't like, yo, I mean, Taft would be cool for, you know, for the boys to go to. Um, well, I was military. So I, there was no basis here. Right. You know what I mean? So in a sense, it was kind of a combination of being in the military, gotcha. go to where the bases are. Yeah. And um, like being that I went to this school <laughs> in the valley, and I had my own issues with, you know, the districts yeah. and, and the, the police and everything, I'm like, nah, man, you need a better shake. You need a little bit more diversity because out here, is, it, at that time, it was more white than anything. And yeah. I don't want to be in the inner city because it's all black. Mm -hmm. So you try to find something, you know, <clears throat> different. And by the time I moved to the Bay Area, it was real diverse. Yeah, there's a little bit of everything. Yeah, you know, so. Uh, but yeah, I, I think sports wise sucked. But um, as far as them growing up to miss the things that I missed, mm -hmm. and, man, please, I, I, I do that every day. Uh, so, I would never. So I would say, do all of you guys? Do you, all of you guys feel like it's better to give your children a diverse background when it comes to schooling, or do would you rather put them in an all black school or an all white school now? Like, I'll, I'll, you got, I don't have children here, so I can't really okay. speak too much. No, I like growing up, and that's my favorite part about the baby that it was so diverse. Yeah, like it was. Like when I moved places, people was like, you know, what's a Filipino? What's a Tongan? What's I'm like, how do y'all not? How do y'all not know what this is? Like, we you know had, what a Samoan is? Yeah. Like, how do you not know this? But we had everything, like right. everything. So, but I did. So when I went to the military, mm. I didn't know what a Filipino was, because my only anybody that had slanted eyes was Bruce Lee. Yeah. Chinese period. You yeah. Know? So, I got about twenty five Filipino guys in my company, and I'm like, "What are you guys?" And of course, they got offended because yeah. I'm they're almost like less than. I'm like, "I'm not. I don't know. You know, I'm like yeah. eighteen, and we, I grew up with, with white, Mexican, black. That's it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what a Filipino was. Yeah. So I had to learn that, and then of course, the military was like so much diversity. Yeah. Because you get everybody. You mm -hmm. get every every city represented, every state. You know, the whole nine yards. So for me, that was my you know, to get away from LA. <clears throat> so by the time I had them, I'm like, I don't want them to just be too black. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you want to have everything. I want to be able to sit down and have a discussion about Wall Street. Yeah. But I want to be able to also sit down and have a discussion about the hood. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to sit down and have a discussion about the barrio. I want to be able to be into everything. So no matter where I go, I'm good. And then I wanted them to have it even better than I did. Got so, it. you know, that was my, you know, I prefer diversity over just, you know, because we can be who we are at the time. Right. I need to be able to, because if, if, if you're networking mm -hmm. and everybody looks like you, mm -hmm. you're limited to your, your, your surroundings. 
But if you got some other friends that are white or whatever, they can tell you things that you didn't know or, you know, I can get you into this if you, you know, especially back then, everything was about who you knew. Yes, all your network. That, that, and that was it, yes. you know. So your kid, you know, the banker president's son graduated high school, he got a job, mm -hmm. you know. And then, but if you cool with him, I get my dad to get you in, you know. So then that's how, to me, that's how the diversity started coming because if you knew other people mm -hmm. other than black people, <clears throat> You can get into something else, so that's why for me diversity was way better. I mean, you know. Yeah, do you feel like your? I was gonna ask you, you never, you never answered. Oh, in terms of. I mean, for pilot, when you for, for me, you start getting pilot for into. me, I feel like um, you 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 will find like blackness. You will you'll identify as black regardless of whatever setting you're in. Mm -hmm. Like you see, I mean, you see the people who get to tell black stories now. A lot of these are like. Um, upper elite private school kids who went to white schools their whole life, but you know, now they're telling like they're telling black stories, you know. So it's like it almost you you'll find blackness. It's not a huge, you know. It's a, ideal to be in a more diverse setting, but <clears throat> I wanted to ask, yeah, because you grew up in I grew up in San Francisco, which is diverse, but I grew up you know right. in a bubble of of the hood. So my exposure was very much limited, like black and Mexican and but we did have like Pacific Islanders and Samoans and Tongans and stuff but yeah. we're all kind of lumped together so I didn't really have access to otherness my first ac my first experience with like white people or seeing white people was when I moved uh to the suburbs I went yeah. to Bear Valley mm -hmm. like I like had never seen like a blonde like woman like mm -hmm. my age. it was like weird it was like weird um oh, like it was hella weird. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's just like it's it's very rare when you've seen that stuff. It, that stuff is extremely. Our school was so rare. new. Well, Black Diamond was brand new when we went there too. So we were the first class at Black Diamond, okay. and we were like the fourth class at Dave Valley. So I had all brand new schools, but that was Andy out there pissed. Was like shit, right? I, you know what I mean, so in comparison to a San comparison. Francisco Unified School District public school, nigga, it, yeah, it looked like right. a, a Olympus. Right. <laughs> Olympus. Yeah. So but, our schools, Dave Valley was so nice. Every wrestling tournament, every cheerleading, just was like there. everything was held yeah. there because mm -hmm. our school was brand new. All the other schools started copying. Right. Like, right. Dear, Dear Valley was the first of its kind to be those. like, this is like a college. Mm. So, no, that wasn't normal. Okay. It was just, I, I mean, it was, it was normal, normal for us because yeah. these are our first schools, but everybody else, not. Nah. So, I, I, got a, I got a question um, since McKeith was sort of intentional and rightfully so into like immersing you into like diverse settings. How would you say, what is your social circle like now since you grew up in a diverse area pretty much your whole life would you say that your core group of friends is is a diverse representation of like that <laughs> it's black, <They're> black. <laughs> <laughs> black. but but navigating in other circles i'm very comfortable with mm -hmm. versus you can tell there's some people who, who ain't been around white people or ain't been around mexicans or whatever so you could tell they're off whereas me i'm like because we lived in pittsburgh first and pittsburgh was all sports black Everybody black, black. Antioch was my first, like, all these white people. Okay, right. So before, it was black, Mexican, mm -hmm. you know, the normal. Then we moved to Antioch, I was like, it's a lot of white people. So it was different, and we did have weird racial stuff, because, you know, people was coming from Filmo, Oakland, mm -hmm. they ain't from there either. So it was weird at first, and then it just becomes like, oh, this is life. So then as you become an adult, like now, 
I uh my core circle is black, but like tomorrow we go on one of his teammates, they have a party, it's gonna be a bunch of white people. But so like, you know what I mean? Like I'm yeah. just I can wherever we go or we don't. Did you I just I, I'm more free with when it's just us. Mm-hmm. I don't I, I don't have no filter, I don't have no I'm just going because just the comfort level is just like yeah that makes sense it's just different yeah. but as far as like no nah, I can go anywhere like, yeah no matter me mm-hmm. let me ask you do you feel like because you came from you know blackly black hood all that stuff did that you think do you think that contributed to why you enjoyed like a Grand Rapids so much because oh. it was just so different I uh. Dude, like, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, even in Antioch and just dealing with the shit that I was, like, dealing with at home and, and just the lack of attention and just kind of feeling isolated, um, I saw, like, that whole world and, like, the suburbs, Antioch, Pittsburgh, all that shit. Um, I saw that and I was just, like, I was just, there was just, like, an envy inside of me. Like, I was just jealous that, like, y'all just got to, y'all just got to have this life y'all whole life. You know what I mean? Like, y'all just been out here. So there was just, like, a part of me that just wanted to just cause destruction. So, um, <laughs> I was, I was, why I was like, why I was, man, yeah, dude, I just wanted to, like, I just wanted to fuck everything up. Just, like, out of, you know, my own, you know, shit that I had going on at home and stuff, too. Um, but in terms of Grand Rapids, I liked, it's a, it's a, it's, it was a different, um, experience in college versus like post college. I think I, I just really like love like college life. I really enjoy college life and just sort of the the no responsibilities and oh, just yeah. like you know just having just having a good time playing sports yeah, right. you know with your crew getting drunk just like fucking around that having a, like just having every, an amazing time day. with uh, with no responsibility. But um, yeah, I think that was I think that was it. I mean, at the at the end of the day, like I'm like I'm a city dude. Like I don't like quiet. I like I like noise. I like vibrance. I like energy. I love living in Brooklyn. Like you know, motherfucker on the other side of my wall, loud music playing all the yeah. time. Like I love that, but maybe I just love chaos. I don't know. Yeah, I no, I think it, I think it's your your environment because Cotty just started loving it. The, you know, she's from the city. So yeah. when we first moved out here, we were in Koreatown. It was loud all the time. And I was like, hey, shut up. <laughs> and she was like, this is home. Yeah, yeah. But we didn't grow up like that. We, it was quiet. Right. And so when we moved, she was like, I want to stay closer to the city, blah, blah. And after we've been out here, you know, with the kids, we've been out here six. I was like, so what do you think? She's like, I'm, I'm, we're never leaving. We're yeah. never leaving the suburbs. Like, it's chill. It's, I can go on my walk. I can, you know, like, no, we're never leaving. You have to get out of your environment to know that there's something different. Right. And, and 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 if you don't if you don't move around or if you move from one extreme to the next you don't have that happy medium mm-hmm. so you I, my dad came to visit me and we sit on the porch on Pruitt Ranch yeah. and he sits on the porch and he goes how do you do it and I'm thinking he's getting ready to give me some praise on you know moving out and everything like keep that on, keep on. and he goes it's too quiet I haven't heard a helicopter I haven't heard mm-hmm. a siren and I was like, what? And he went home early the next day because he couldn't, what they, what they call, he was like institutionalized. Yeah. He was used to the noise. <clears throat> he got home and called me and said, man, guess what? And I'm like, nigga just got shot on the corner. <laughs> I go, right? <laughs> and I heard it. <laughs> sort of yell too. <laughs> so that was his thing, quietness. I, I think we went to 7-Eleven. I just jumped out the car and rolled up the windows or anything. He goes, what are you doing? And I'm like, get ready to go to the store. And he goes, you know, like, you know, man, you, that's where, mm-hmm. that's what you're used to. Yeah. I want to be comfortable that I can get out of my car. I'm never that comfortable. You know what yeah. I mean? I, you can get got anywhere. But I want, it was more laid back. You know what I mean? And, and also, too, if you've been there and you've seen it, when you pull up, you're looking at your surroundings. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I don't go anywhere and be like, you know, I see two dudes here, two dudes there. Or who's the lookout? Because mm-hmm. it's embedded in me. So I don't go up to banks and just be like, la, 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 because yeah, I know yeah. I'm going to get got. Yeah. You know, so, but yeah, he went home. And, and he didn't like, he didn't like the quiet. He wanted nonsense. And I was like, who wants that? So when you get away from it, you you want your kids to not have to grow up to sirens and, you know, helicopters every mm-hmm. single day, you know. And that's all he did that's all he knew and you know what's interesting about that is that even in the suburban setting when 
city kids move into right. the setting, all the suburban kids want to claim like they're from the city or have some association right. to that. Right. Which is always interesting to me, because then everybody, you know, you're young, you call each other, you ain't from there, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Right. But everybody's like, no, I'm from, so it's like nobody feeling, being comfortable right. nobody wanted to peace say with like, I'm from Antioch. Nobody wanted to say it. Yeah. But granted, a lot of them weren't from Antioch. A lot of them did move from Oakland, right. from San Francisco, right. from Richmond, because they was giving them vouchers out. And everybody was moving out there. Hey, don't man, don't put, don't, don't put that business Hey, man, like you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, it's yeah. what it is. It is what it is. But I would say with all that, too, you, you you never felt like you can be like, all right, I can still move my kids into a black neighborhood, but just mm. an upper black neighborhood. Mm. So like a nicer, like, it's like, like, for instance, like, you know, I, I, I know Keon's a, a fan of a, a blackish, right? And it's like, did you did you watch the, the whole thing? You've been, the, yeah, like, I mean, a spoiler alert, you haven't seen blackish. Yeah. But at the, end of, at the end of the last season of blackish, he finally moves his, his family to a black he, he moved him to like the Heights. Yeah. And he's like, he kind of felt like, Baldwin Hills. Hills. Baldwin Hills or whatever. He's like, I probably should have did this beforehand instead of bringing my kids to this white neighborhood, right. this white suburb. And now they, they're kind of missing some of these social cues. And if I would have just moved them just to a blacker, nice neighborhood, it's, it would have been fine. But, yeah. but when you do that, that you, you're not getting, you're not getting, like say Inglewood, when we was coming up, man, <coughs> Inglewood, Western, was like, do you mm-hmm. live here? Mm-hmm. You couldn't just stroll through Century and yeah. get on Inglewood. Because mm-hmm. Aether Malone moved, uh, was in Inglewood. Mm-hmm. He was, t- to us, they was rich. Yeah. So when black people move where white people are, you've lost that blackness. There is no, to me, there is that gray area. Mm-hmm. It's either you black and poor, or you trying to rub shoulders with them. And now you forgot where you came from. So Aether Malone would always talk about I just got a house, you know, you got a pool? Yeah, nobody had a pool. Mm. So he doesn't understand why everybody's like, oh my God, let's go to your house, blah, 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 blah. So for me, be living or moving into an area that would be predominantly white is not cool, but I don't want to be in a predominantly black either. So I wanted neighbors mm. to look different. I wanted to look to my right. And it's well, granted, but on our street, all the neighbors black. <laughs> and that was on, one side. <laughs> on one side, on one side, on one side, the whole street was black. Was it, is, it, is it more? Was it more of like getting my kids at one point? I remember you saying you're, you wanted, say you wanted the kids, you wanted the kids to grow up in a nice neighborhood. So it was more about like, all right, it was more about diversity, not even just a nice neighborhood. It's like diversity and nice neighborhood. Well, it, it well, first of all, when you when you what, what you end up doing is you move in by your house, or whatever, mm. and then you start seeing where everybody is. Mm. So. Our next door neighbor was a black guy. He's like, "Oh, that black dude," you know. So now it's a sense of we're coming up mm. because you go from what you saw was, uh, you know, mostly white people had houses. Mm. Then all of a sudden you go check now everybody was black, you know, carrying them, and we're like, "Oh, oh we doing it?" So now you we all bonding, you know. We would hang out and talk at the mailbox like six dudes. We never go to each other's house. It's weird, but we just <laughs> talk all day on, the, on the, at the mailbox, <laughs> but. All the black people was on one side of the street. Mm-hmm. So it was like, man, if something happened, they're going to be looking at one side. I mean, literally, it was what, six? It was hella six, houses. Because it was all one, black. It was one, two, then us. They were Filipino. Mm-hmm. Ken was on the three, white four, 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 four. five. It was like seven, eight houses, all black. Mm-hmm. So and it seems like every year, bro. There was none. Yeah. yeah. Well, James and them was on the other side. But it, it was there. That's right. Sure. They were. You know. So yeah, I think diversity for me. It was a combination of a lot. You look for a lot of things. You don't want it, like I said, I never wanted them not to understand what it's like to be black. Mm-hmm. You know, you gotta know your blackness. But I don't want you to be, everything you say is what we consider blackness. You right. know what I mean? I want you to be able to, you know, I, well, I don't know, pretty sure you guys have seen guys that talk and they'll say, you know what I'm saying, like 75 times. Mm-hmm. I didn't want that. I want you to be able to put a sentence together. Mm-hmm. You know, I understand when you just sit there, I'm waiting for the punchline. I'm waiting for you to say what you gotta say. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I went to the store, you know what I'm saying? It's like, mm-hmm. okay, but where are we going? But I wanted them to have that, but not too much of it. So it was a real thin line between making sure they was able to understand their blackness, because I don't want, I don't like whitewashed black people. You know, mm-hmm. understand <clears throat> where you come from. And I, even growing up, you know, every, every the rappers, they all moved out. I was gonna say that that goes to another that goes to another element to where I feel like sometimes sometimes we do that we go as black people we'll go all right cool 
I'm gonna put my kid into an all white school and all of a sudden and it's like it's not is it even fair to call them white wash where it's just like yo their parents moved them there and now they might have some type of identity crisis because now they went to an all white school and all this stuff like that. Should have did like okay so we grew mm-hmm. up like I said Pittsburgh first was predominantly black mm-hmm. then our street was predominantly black too then we would still come out and visit family all summer all uh, so it was like. I don't feel I don't feel like there's ever an excuse to just not know. I mean, what, maybe, maybe any you know, black. I would say whatsoever. maybe it kind of is. It's just just real quick. I know you're gonna say something, Gary, but just real quick. It's like if they come from an extreme, kind of like how your dad came from, right? If they came from a like a super super hood, it's just like, yo, I don't want my kids to experience none of this. Correct. So we're going from this extreme to now this extreme. But you don't and, know any black people. You can send them to hang out. Yeah, but they, they might don't not. Know they might be all hood. And that's the thing. Like, when, you, when you speak of white wash black people, mm-hmm. it's like now it sort of kind of lumps black people into sort of a monolith, sort of homogenous way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Where it, the, when you say the goal is to like go and get into the suburbs and, and find diversity, mm-hmm. but you know some kids happen to go to private schools and and kind of have that experience, and then they have children who may be also black, right. and then they have the same experience. So through generation generation, you become further detached. From the origin, from the from the hood, essentially, right. and then by the time you get back, by the time you take your family for summer vacation to the hood, they're so out of their element that they're not even comfortable there. And and you might experience bullying. It might you know you might because right. even when I grew up in, in San Francisco, and my mom would take us for the summer to go to Alabama, nigga, I have to fight like everybody. Yeah, because it's like oh, you talking proper? You right, know, right. like no yeah. fight, I fight all these country ass yeah, right, right. right. with mosquito bites and chicken pox <laughs> bumps all over his fucking leg. Yeah. <laughs> I fight all these things, and I'm winning too. Yeah. You know, so it's just it's just a, it's an interesting thing of like what is what is the the identity, and then you you spoke on like you know people being able to use like proper English and, and proper language, right. and you get in some circles and people call that code switching. And then that's an issue, you know what I mean? So it's like, where where are we with it? Can we can we arrive at it? Because I don't, I'm gonna be honest, I don't like the term whitewash because it isn't fair if you grow up. We yeah. grow up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, as a child, like, you, you didn't you didn't get the chance. To yeah, you didn't pick that. Like, that's not. But I do feel like there's always you there. There should always be a, a sort of sense of like some kind of connection, like just a little bit. Even if it's my cousin, so my whole family from both sides, my mom and my dad, right? So my cousin grew up in the suburbs. Um, they used to bring her to LA. She used to be like, "What yeah. is this?" Right? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> she used to be like, "Hell no!" Nah, right? So they they was like, "Oh, wait a minute." She thinks she's better than us. No, but they were just like, "We we got to make sure." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But when I went to her, she just graduated. She's going to college. Went to a black college. When I went to her graduation party, her home circle black girls. So what happened was, even though she was like, "Nah." She eventually got comfortable, but she ran track. So because of sports, yeah. you meet all these. So that was her connection to, you know right. what I mean? So now she went to black college like she could. But at first, when she was little, little, she was like, we went to we went to get sausages from Western in the uh, 60s, whatever. Yeah. And she was like, what is <laughs> freaked out? She was like, oh, mom, look at that guy running. He was cracking. Right. She's like, what, what, what is, what is, what is this? I'm trying to say, I'm, that's kind of funny. He's he daughter. Said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm and wondering, she was like, what is, have, what we, have we found a politically correct way to say crackhead yet? No. 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 <laughs> crackhead. That's because white people don't care. Junkie, don't care about no, the power. Like, right. right. Um, it's, it's important to give it to them, you know, to, to let them see it. You know, like I would always say, we're going to go to a party. I'm like, out there, they're going to shut it down. Mm. It's not going to last long. And then sure enough, an hour later, he coming back. Police came, shut it down. They're not going to allow this to take off. Mm-hmm. You know, even though we're out here, mm-hmm. there's still control. And we're not the ones doing the control. So you still would get that lesson of this is what it's like to be black mm-hmm. in, a, in a white neighborhood. Mm-hmm. No matter how you look at it, they're going to still look at you a certain way. But it's better than, to me, I felt your fear can be on two different levels, okay? Mm-hmm. When you're in the hood, the chance of you getting jumped, beat up, killed by, by a black guy, right? Mm-hmm. You move out to the suburbs, you got other people. Now, when I was at Taft, we went to these, these this girl's house, the older sister, me and my, my older brother, older sister, we're coming back from their house, and all you hear in the bushes, because they up in the hills. We gotta get down to, I think, when Necker Boulevard, whatever, where the bus was at. But we gotta walk from the upper, and all you hear was, get them niggas. 
Mm. These two niggas. Now we broke. Mm. We're running. Get on the bus. We keep like, man, that was crazy. Then we get home and it's like, get them niggas. Mm -hmm. Two different extremes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which one did you fear the worst? You know what I mean? Because on the on one end, it's you know, beat up shots, whatever, whatever. On the other one, it could be from a tree oh, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. You know, that different kind of hate. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you never get away from. So you gotta kind of, you know, give it to them so they don't fall prey above being, you know, yeah. you in, in, a, in, a, in a setting and you're the only one there. And you're just like, oh, what's up, Tom, and everything. Nah, man. <laughs> yeah. Some shit could happen. Well, you well, know some, what I mean? I think some what some happens too. But sometimes the parents that are from might be from a certain neighborhood that move to the suburbs that try to get away from all blacks in general, is that some of them are ashamed to ever go back. They're ashamed of their family back there. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, it's, I, I think that's where, I think that's where I, I always feel like there's always a weird extreme where it's like, I, I, I'm always, I, I kind of, I, like I like the diversity aspect too, but I also like the, 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 the aspect of like, yo, know, going to a, a nice black neighborhood, like my, one of my boys, he, he, he lives, what they call it like a, I think they're calling it a, um, not Windsor Hills. I forgot what it was. I know you're talking about the new Rancho Domingo yeah, Hills. Like it, it was Kyle thing, but it's like, yeah. oh, now we fix it up a little bit. This zip code now, we're going to raise the price of the, 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 right. the mortgage, right. but it's like, it's also nicer. But it's a, so he moved his family over there, and it's like, it's it's majority uh, black neighborhood. And it's just like, yo, it's like, he put his kids in majority black schools, and it's like, he, his kid gets a little bit of diversity, and he, but he also makes sure he teaches stuff at home, too. He teaches right. stuff. He takes them out places. He doesn't just take them only to black places. He takes right. them up to the Bay Area in certain places. He takes them to places where there are other people at. So he shows them diversity, but he also goes, "Look, this is this is this is your people. This is right. home." Definitely. And I don't and I don't want to I don't want to say that because I, I know we keep referencing neighborhoods. Yeah. The hood isn't blackness. I want right. to I want to say that you know what I mean. Like, we keep talking about that, but like it's absolutely. I just mean a connection with black people. Right. I don't necessarily mean the hood, like you have to have a connection with the hood or country right. ass niggas or just connection right. with black people. It could be all middle class family mm -hmm. black people. Just a connection with black people is what I'm talking when, about. When we grew up, there was a couple guys that lived out in the valley. Like I think you you, you lived in the valley. Yeah, we were probably in. They couldn't really relate to us. Mm -hmm. You know, uh dude had a, 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 a not a Ford Mercury. He had a Mercury with a well tub back in the day, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was like, look at this, you know. And uh because he, his parents was a doctor or something else. Terrence something, whatever his name. Anyway, but he had nice cars, he had nice clothes, he, dre he dressed uh, preppy, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And we're talking about crocus sacks, khakis, Levi's, whatever. Mm -hmm. And here he is talking about, hey fellas. And everybody's like, this motherfucker, you know? Yeah. So even when you get born into a situation or you live in a certain situation, mm -hmm. the parent doesn't think how bad it could be for the kid. Mm -hmm. Because the parents are like, we're moving here, that's where we live, that's what it's going to be, you're going to be okay. Yeah. And then you got to look at it like, no, they don't accept me. And then they don't accept me. Mm -hmm. So it is kind of weird as a parent mm -hmm. to make sure your kids ain't getting bullied or whatever the case may be. Yeah, you that's know? why I think diversity is important because you can't have, you can't, you can't be catching it from both ends. Right. Like, if, you, if you don't know, if you don't know, so you have, you're, you're completely detached from, from black people. So now you're in this white circle. They'll, yeah, they'll take you, but you know, mm. and you can't. Never you have no connection with your own. So you yeah. just where, where do I fit in? Like you hear that from black That's people what I'm saying. all the time. Where do I fit in? I, I'm with like when you're like, hey fellas, like should it be upon? Should it be our responsibility to embrace and accept I that think person as he as I think they we come? Should. I think we should. As they are, like they're like this is well, who I am. Because now you got to talk about it. most of it was jealousy, because we out here, <clears throat> you know, doing whatever to try to make ends meet, mm -hmm. and this guy's walking around with. His clothes, what he's wearing, is more money than I've seen in my whole lifetime at the yeah. time. Yeah. You know what I mean? His car, his clothes. So you're looking at him like, you think you special. Not that he thought it was special. Right. It's because yeah. we thought it was special because you live out here, we live out there, you got your car, we got to catch the bus. So you can't relate to us. So when he come around us, you know, we would look at him like, what you want? Because we talking struggle. We talking about, mm -hmm. I got to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning to get on this bus. And you talking about, well, I'm going to drive my car. Then get out of here. Well, and that, that, was, that was always the, I would say this. So I got from the, the other end of being from the valley. Uh -huh. Like, it was always, our, our perspective was always just like, and also too, we, our generations are different. So I, right. what happened was a lot of people from L.A. ended up moving to the valley. So the valley did become a, a melting pot of kind of L.A. 
Right. But, but we still got that energy of like, we, we got, you know, oh, you a valley boy. You know what I'm saying? You a valley girl or whatever. And you go to LA. If, if, or if they came out here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Either, either, yeah. Either, either or, right? So it's like, it was always a, 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 this thing, this, this thing was like, oh, the valley people are soft, valley people are rich. It's just like, I was just like, where, where are they getting it from? Like, yeah. there's just, because and in some, some areas, that is true, right? Some areas, the truth is, it's like some kids are rich, but it was just like, that, I think a lot of times, we, we were just like, we were just trying to live regular. I think the animosity did come a lot towards right. from the LA people. And we're just like, yo, man, we, 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 we got the same radio stations. We essentially, it's a very similar culture, just that a lot of y'all stuff is tighter. Like a lot of, in LA, the hoods are on top of each other. The right, neighborhoods right, are like, right, right. blood crit, blood, it can be like that. Right, Whereas in the right. Valley, it's like, we had gangs, but our game was like, but all right, with that. It, our games were like miles away, you know what I'm saying? It was like, it even, again, we had two different generations. Yeah. You can't be from the Valley talking about gangs. Well, and that's what I'm saying. He can't even accept it right now. He can't even. He can't even. He can't even. Hear like, you like, right what are you talking now? about? But, but, here, <laughs> but here's the thing. Bro, bro, that, what I'm saying. The energy, almost walked off. Exactly. Yeah. The energy. The energy was different. But I would say. I would say. Uh, but you gotta. When you were growing up, they had just started. These things have spread to different. It's, it's so different because like big. this is this is this is, this is my this is my middle school introduction. My middle school introduction was literally first day orientation. Look, everybody. Uh, we got brand new sixth graders in here. This is this is cocaine. This is crack and cocaine. It's sold frequently at this school. We're gonna do locker check. These are shanks because people get stabbed at this school. I'm like, I thought the valley was right. What you're, what you, how you viewed it? This, yeah, this right. is the valley. The time, time we they probably, they probably have one. Later. I probably have one incident. No, not that. No, like, like, no, like, like, not valley. at all. Like your valley. Not at all. They probably got that. It, that's that's yeah, what he's saying. That's what I'm so, saying. Antioch so, was the the valley. So the and valley. Then, this is this is so, this is like ninety. That, for me, this is like in like ninety, like ninety seven, ninety nine, two thousand. So I right, think you're twenty years different, bro. I, yeah, we done seen we done seen kids at our school get I, a kid at, my, at Kennedy got his head blown up like at, at our school. Like this is not like when, when people be like, oh, it's, it's nothing. We're just like. Y'all don't even know what y'all talking about. Yeah, right. most people that were also also even living in LA, they never came to the valley. If they saw the valley on TV. It's all saved by the bell. Right. Right. It's all saved by the bell. Yeah. It's all clueless. And it's like, oh, this is just like, right. this is what it is. Nine, nine it was like, whatever. Right. So I, I would say, too, that was, that was also the reason why you saw a lot of people in the valley that kind of had a little bit of animosity towards it. Like, it was like, all right, you think it's sweet. Right. Now we got to beat y'all up. Right. And then we would beat up LA people. We and would, it was just like, it would, it would be a back and forth thing to where it's just like, yo, we just want love, but we were considered soft. Because mm-hmm. I remember I agree, we yeah. would always say, mm-hmm. you, say you know, we can I get agree. 10 mm-hmm. guys from the city and we could just take over. Because what they consider gangs would be like, you know, we, we, we talk about fist fighting, we talk about shooting somebody, you know. Mm-hmm. So we've already elevated to shoot. Yeah. So if you talking about we got a gang, well, where the weapons at? What you got? You know, well, I, I would so say- for us, we were like, we didn't respect Valley Gangs because it was like y'all not ready. They didn't have the Well, here's the thing. Yeah, you're not ready. But that was like twenty years ago. Correct. Like, that, that was then. Also, too, I would say I don't know. Black gangs back then were heavy. Latino gangs in the valley have always been pretty thick. Oh yeah. yeah. And it would have been. It probably would have yeah. been an issue because the for head- them though, but not. And like I said, if you're talking about gangs, what demographic of people are you talking about? See, for us, there was places in L.A. Liso Village and stuff. You. Black folks ain't going down there. Right. Because all you got to do is hit that whistle. Yeah. And a hundred dudes going to come out. You're going to get beat to death. Yeah. So we knew there were certain places you don't go. Right. But the valley was like your escape. Like for me to come to the valley, I'm like, I ain't worried about nobody shooting yeah. me. Yeah. I ain't worried about nobody right. jumping on me. <laughs> I ain't worried about a goddamn thing except dumb folks. And yeah. then they just came to the valley and made it work. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, that's what right. I'm saying. Like, it's like, it's like, like, and I didn't even know until I went away, came back, and they was like, you from Antioch? I was like, yeah. Like, that ain't what you what you left right. and what it is now. Right. Like, right. right. The right. Bathroom, but, and that, well, that's what happens yeah. when if you look at when we leave and go somewhere. Everywhere, I hate to say this, everywhere we go, we gonna bring that element. Well what happens is it's like we right, well, right now what's happening we is just like, do. Well, we, we have, have an obligation to it. There's well, right. it can come like cause even I'm not like a hood dude, but you know, I've had my run ins um when I moved to the suburbs and my niggas from the city came out. And then it was right. funk with the locals because right. we, right. we was pulling all the bitches. Well, right. that and then like Keenan was saying that at the end of the day, wherever you're from, hands is hands. Yeah, right. like if you, I don't care where you're from. Yeah, but like, yeah. you got it. You can so, be chin check yeah. no matter where you're so from. So this is what happens. What happens is 
you will run that. So if you say, we in the city, and something to jump off, and then like, man, where you, man? I'm from LA. Oh, right. you know, you go, man, I'm from the valley. You feel me? Right. If you so, see, but that would be like, okay, right. well, we'll try it. Right. Well, no, no, I'm talking about we rolling yeah. together. Oh. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, when I, when I was a military, dudes was, I mean, one dude lied that he was from New York. My boy, Bakini, was from New York. And the dude said, and so he's testing. Because, you know, like, if, I, if you say you're from mm -hmm. the city, you know, I'm a test. Yeah, you know yeah, I, mean? yeah. I, need, I need to know no, where we're from. Yeah. So, Look, a lot of dudes from the right. would claim. <laughs> he goes, Munich. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 nah. 38. Nah, nah. Whoop his ass. We didn't understand that a reputation of being from Detroit or from Philly, you know, from New York or from LA or whatever, that was your calling card. It was like certain dudes wouldn't even come at you right. because you affiliated with, like the dudes from Philly, they didn't give a damn because they had that little Philly talk. You yeah. know, I thought it was cool as hell. Mm -hmm. The dudes from New York, cool as hell. Mm -hmm. Then the dudes from Detroit, I was like, man, you know, whatever, whatever. Kansas City, you know, all of that stuff, you... You know, and I, I was telling my kids, when you when I left home, I look at everybody's size in the month. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter where you're from. Right. But now if you said, if I said, where you from? Like my boy was from Chicago. He was a disciple gangster. Mm -hmm. I understand what that is. Yeah. Okay. Now whether you can fight or not, didn't matter. I'm looking at where you from. Mm -hmm. Now the dude that says, I'm from Buford, Oregon. Let me get the hell out of here. Right. Now Buford, right. Oregon might got hands. Right. Right. You feel me? He didn't but grow up taking he his classes his whole life. That's what I'm saying. He might have right. yeah. So. Or on the farm, he got he, he farm you, strong. Oh, right, right. He was yeah, like, uh, had a the dude that had his neck was so big. I was like, I couldn't even choke him because yeah. he was just a big old, you know. And so I had to look at everybody mm -hmm. and say, I'm gonna give him a little space. I don't care about him. And it was, I mean, you meet eighty dudes in one day, and all I did was sit there going, I kick his ass, I kick yeah. his ass, I kick his ass. He might do a little something, and then you get to know right. people, and you and you realize. It, it don't matter where you're from, because yeah. everybody's cool as hell. But once you get past the, uh, oh, you from L.A., you know, yeah, I'm from L.A., you know, you, you affiliate to Crips, Bloods, gangs, right. where some people don't even have that. Right. You know what I mean? If you say you grew up in, a, in, in, in the L.A. area, first thing I say is where? I say because right, when yeah. people say I'm from L.A., like you said you're from the city, I'm, I'm thinking Hunters Point. Like, yeah, city, city? I mean, that's where I'm from. Yeah. Okay, see? I didn't say yeah. anything to you, but yeah. I was like, I wonder if he's from Hunters Point. Well, he said, yeah. he said the city. Huh? But, well, I it's didn't like film or hundred point. Uh, right. But uh, I never won we we had a you know shipyard over there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And cats would leave the ship because Hunter's Point was uh -huh. notorious for what they would do over there, even in even at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, we like, oh man, we're gonna be dry docked in Hunter's Point. Shit, man, I ain't getting off this ship unless it's daylight. You know, because mm -hmm. that's the persona that they care. Right, right. You know what I mean? So for me, <clears throat> it is about can you scrap? It doesn't matter where you're from, mm. but it gives you a moment of pause. If I see you walk out of a Taekwondo class, mm. I'm going to probably be like, you probably know something. Yeah. Now, if I see you walk out of Safeway, it's it's 50-50. I don't know what you know or whatever, but if you go, man, I, you know, man, I can go, you know, man. okay, he got a little hood in him. That means he I mean, ain't I, capable I, of doing anything. I guess, I guess a lot of that stuff died for me, mm. being, I guess being from the Valley and then seeing everybody always say where they were from and they were, and then they normally look lost. Like it was just like it was like if you're from even not even just from LA, they come right. like they're from, I'm from New York. From Brooklyn, we're like okay, like you just push this dude extra hard on, on the court. Right. Y'all got to scrap over in the grass. It don't right. matter where you're from. Right. Right. It, it, it doesn't matter. It, it, and, I, and I hear it doesn't that, matter. That normal, where, when you say where you're from, and normally if a guy doesn't have that type of heart, it's going to intimidate him. So if you go like I'm from like if I'm, if I'm, if goes, I'm from Oakland. And if I ain't got the heart, I'm like, oh, it's from Oakland. Uh, dude, 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 dude tried to do that to me once. It yeah. is. I'm from Oakland. I said, is Oakland coming with you? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm, no, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. That, that's, what you, that's what you also got to understand. It, right. it, it, it speaks to your associations. It speaks to your experience. Like, I'm a, I am trust a nigga from Oakland before I trust somebody from Vacaville. You know what I mean? Like, in terms of, like, if right. I'm with you and you're part of my, and you, you my niggas that I'm rolling with, if some shit pop off, I need to know, like, who going to be down. When shit jump off. Yeah. That's, that's, I'm more, I'm more like experiences yeah. haven't been what mine is. You know what I mean? So yeah. if you go, you know, even in LA, I mean, that fact, dude was in LA and I was like, you know, he was talking, came up, you know, in, to the base, talking about his, all his crypt shit and everything like that. And I'm like, where you from, bro? And, uh, you know, he started telling me. So everybody started asking me, is he really this? I'm like, nah. He just, he's using LA right. for sound, you know, to, yeah. to, for a platform. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. funny, funny, funny story. My dude from Philadelphia, um, came down to San Diego and told everybody that I'm coming down there just slapping people. So now, I have no idea. I get down to uh, San Diego and I get on the ship and I and Terry and I say, what's up, bro? 
and uh, he wouldn't speak to me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the, you know, okay. It took about two weeks. Finally, I asked him, I said, man, what's up with brothers? Why nobody talk to me? Well, person, you're supposed to come down and just kick everybody ass. I'm like, who said that? So my dude from Philly, because he, you know, he kind of looked like a monkey, so they talked about him. Mm -hmm. So he go, when my boy come down, and he gonna have all y'all. So up and down to me, but because of where I'm from, mm -hmm. you know, he from LA, he go. So everybody's looking at me like, oh, this dude going from LA, he gonna come down and want to shoot everybody up, blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, no man, you know, I don't vouch for nobody else. He's a grown man, blah blah blah. Yeah. Then everybody started talking to me, yeah. but because I was from LA, because he pitched that so hard. You have people like, I don't, I don't want to do it. Because he might bring an element to this base. We don't know what he's going to do. Yeah. So if you say I'm from Hanford, Connecticut, mm. what you going to do? Now, if you say, you know, I'm from the Bronx, okay. Yeah. That's gonna, yeah. It's going to mean something just because of where you're from. doesn't mean you're any tougher than him. Right, it doesn't. But I'm going to look at you different because you grew up in the Bronx. You've probably seen yeah, some stuff. Seen so if you say, I grew up in Connecticut, what you see? Now, you might have seen a whole lot of stuff. It could have been different from what he said. But I'm not looking at you like, yeah, whatever. I mean, I don't, I don't, I look at it like this. I don't know every hood and where every hood is, is located at. So when people, if somebody tells me a city, I might be like, I don't, I've never heard of that before. And it might be like, they might be the hood and that might be the hood. Right. And I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I just take everybody, like, anybody can, any, I don't think anybody, like anybody, anybody, anybody can get it. it. Yeah. <laughs> but, anybody but, can get which it. Anybody also, but, but what it also uh, suggests is that you got access. Like, if you, even if you get whooped, you know how niggas be, yeah. you get whooped, uh, you yeah, call a bunch of niggas. So, I when you say you're from somewhere, I'm, gonna I'm, gonna call, <laughs> I'm, I'm calling reinforcement. Right. <laughs> which is some sucker, which is some sucker oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it happens. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But at the end of the day, the suckers everywhere, and it's, and it's right, right. niggas everywhere. But like, no, that's, that, and that part of it, I will give you that part. That's true because right. I had whooped to do. Yeah, and then got on his phone. Got on, the next day, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know these 20. I didn't call him. Wait a minute. I'm saying, time out. Wait a minute. Time out. Oh, Luckily, the phone. I got three guys with me. I didn't have, no, I was with all girls. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> So luckily, I ran into some dudes, I, and it was about six or seven of them. Yeah. Just enough to be like, all right, not to wait for him to come pick me up. Yeah. He called me. And I knew it would have happened. Yeah. And he was like, just ran into, uh, you know, I know. So a nigga snitched on me, by the way. They didn't know who I was. All I saw, I kid you not, I'm talking to these girls. All I see is this. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Is right so, boy, bro, hell, so, hold on. Was it like, where the nigga with the shoulders at? That's <laughs> him. <laughs> right there. Like, and so I was like, I see it, and I'm like, bro, this is it. I'm about to take this. Yeah, and and, it, and that. So you're at Magic Mountain, right? Yeah. So I. And so I'm home. Home. I'm yeah. I'm home, and he calls me. So I'm like, oh shit, I got a roundup. Get up there to save whatever's left of the last. Right, right. So I, so, you know, so I'm like, oh shit, we'll pay, you know, so I, Then he called me back and said, no, everything was cool. So I'm relieved because I'm looking like, oh, my, my dude finna get it. Because mm -hmm. I know, matter of fact, his dad was pissed. Yeah. Because his dad was like, that was unfair. And I'm like, you, it was funny because we, we, we're in the office, mm -hmm. principal and shit like that. But he's a brother. And I'm like, you know how this shit work? You know what I mean? So yeah. again, like you said, yeah. if you're from somewhere else, you go, mm -hmm. I can't believe two guys. You know, got into it with my son. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how the fuck it was. When we, the bigger the family ruled, ruled the neighborhood. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. just how it went. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like when I'm telling him, because I got pissed. And I'm like, man, you, you want to go outside? Because yeah. I know you pissed at your son, but you know how this shit works. But if yeah. you're still mad, me and you can go outside. And he's like, I'm going to do all that shit. And I'm like, okay, man, I'm done talking about it. But when he called me, I was like, oh, fuck. You know, because I'm just thinking he finna get it. Oh, but I was fine. It was a, it was a snitch. Yeah. So <laughs> after, after I, like I said, I ran with my people. They was like, you good, bro. Like, we got you. Mm -hmm. And so nothing happened. It was a lot of just walking by, like, who going to make the first move? And nobody did it. Right. Yeah, and then right. I ended up leaving. But I caught dude that snitched on me <laughs> a couple of days later <laughs> in, the, uh, in the Albertsons. And I saw him, and he saw me, and dipped out the other way. <laughs> and I'm looking for him to fight him because I'm yeah. like, you almost got me jumped, bro. Yeah. Like, right. And all yeah. this happened in the suburbs. You know, you're trying to take his kids out <laughs> and put them in the same area, right. and right. the shit still right. pop off. But, but it, it, it's going to jump off yeah. because of where that person is from. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And the like, if, that they if, if, if you, if, I mean, even when we grew up, you know, the baseball players or whatever, they still came back home and, and, and hung around. You know what I mean? So, because you didn't want to be labeled as the guy that left and never came back home. Mm -hmm. You talking about Strawberry? Yeah. And, you know, so it was like Eric Davis went to Fremont, went to Cincinnati Reds, blah, blah, blah. He didn't really do it. Strawberry would come home, have all the weed, the whole nine yards, basically front for everybody. So it's like, 
Yeah. And then, so then if you look at their their career, Strawberry could have been one of the elite players ever, but he didn't want to leave that mentality yeah, of the game yeah, and yeah. shit. Six so six Eric Davis was like, I'm out of here. You yeah. know what I mean? So I get it on both sides. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, I think you should have a good mixture mm -hmm. so that way you don't forget or your kids don't forget or you go back home like going to Compton. Mm -hmm. Black as hell. Mm -hmm. I hated Compton. Mm -hmm. It was a whole different element. So every time my dad, like, we're going to go see uh, our auntie in Compton, all me and my brothers and sisters were like, no, we don't want to go to Compton because when you go over there, it's a different element. Mm -hmm. So everybody got to come outside and vouch for you. No, man, that's my cousin. Oh, leave him alone because you ain't from there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So again, if you say I'm from Compton, and you're from somewhere else, it's a whole different element. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to look at you, if you go, yeah, I'm from Athens Port. You know, I'm like, oh, shit, one of them cats. Yeah, yeah. I don't know him, mm -hmm. but just because he said it, I'm like, he could be that dude. Yeah. And then again, he might not be that dude. Mm -hmm. But now, do you want to chance it just based off where you're from? And like you said, anybody can get it. Mm -hmm. But it makes it gives you a moment of pause if somebody starts talking your language. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, nigga, I was in the drive-by, but oh, okay, he, he bought that. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? Whether you really did it or not, you put it out there. That's what that dude did. A lot of was telling all these LA stories, and I finally I got tired of him. And I was like, "Man, where you from?" And then he was like, "Oh, from Eagle, but where?" You know, oh, man. and I'm just breaking down his story. Yeah. And I'm like, "Ah, nigga, you ain't nobody, mm -hmm. but you got everybody thinking you are because right, you're right. from LA." Down, yeah. So, like you said, mm -hmm. you know, you say you're from the valley or wherever. Mm -hmm. And people be like, ah, you know, but that don't mean you can't throw hands. Right. It just means I'm not, that, and, and it's not about being tough. It's just like, well, I'm not. You're not gonna make play me as a sucker either. Right. And, and that's, that's the whole. That's and that's, that's the whole thing. thing. So yeah. you have people looking at dudes that because of where we're from, New York dudes had the same swag, the same. But I like New York dudes. They was cool as hell. But they had this swag about them, the way they talk. Philly had a different swag. Everybody had a swag that she was like, I like that. But because I'm from LA, everybody was rolling with me because we're down in San Diego. Man, we finna go to LA, we gonna go do everything. So I was, you know, pushed up and elevated to like, you the guy that- proximity. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. like, yeah. You yeah. know, and I'm like, man, I already been to Hollywood. I already to see the stars. I don't give a shit about that. Yeah. I'm gonna go somewhere else. Mm. You know what I mean? But because I was from LA, take us to your hood, man, where you ran, where you grew up at and everything. How do you know I grew up in the hood? Because you, I'm from LA. Really? Like you said, I could have been, so, been anywhere. I could have lived L.A. <laughs> County is humongous. <laughs> right. L.A. County is humongous, but L.A. itself is really small. Mm -hmm. Los Angeles is really small. City, because yeah. outside South of Los Angeles, Angeles is everything. Copley, mm -hmm. Watson, the whole night, Inglewood, yeah. everything. That's why when people say, how are you going to be from Orange? So, so now we're going back to what a, a demographic means. you from Orange County, not you, but somebody's from Orange County. Mm -hmm. And you go, where are you from, L.A.? Oh, what part of L.A.? Orange County? Okay, you do realize it's called Orange County. California. Yeah. You're not from LA. Right. But because LA is the the go to, you know, yeah. everything happens in well, LA. It depends on how far you how far yeah, away Orange, you are. Orange from County and LA. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's Orange, a stretch. Orange, 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 Orange County is its own county. Like LA County is LA County. Orange right. County is Orange County. When I say when people say the valley and people say like that, like that's that is this like, is my kids like, are L S U S D. Yeah, right. I went to L A U S D. L A U S D. Yeah. Yeah. I went to school in L A U S D. Yeah, my you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, it's like for me when I was just playing, like when I say L A now, too, it's really just like yo. I don't have time to explain to you where exactly. Right. That's why I said the bay. That's, that's, I don't have time to explain any. And that's when you go so far out of bounds yeah. where you like you just you know for brevity. I'm like, I'm but if you bay. meet somebody who like and you both are out of bounds and you like, oh, okay. yeah, and they're like where? And then you like, oh, okay. And then right. I, like, did I, I did that. I did that. Met a guy he had a Kobe Bryant jersey on. I was like, man, you ain't know, probably ain't from LA. No, I don't even know this guy. I never met him before. You know. And he goes, man, I am from the hood. And I was like, where? And he was like, I grew up on 92nd. I grew up on 96. So now mm -hmm. we start challenging each other. I was like, "Where you get your shoes?" Is that hood challenge, dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is the you store you go to when you? Right, 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 right. I'm like, "Son, did you spend outside?" <laughs> That's what so I know. come to find out, he was a couple years older than me. He knew my sister and everything like that. And you know, I said, well, you, who, "Who put your taps on your shoes?" He goes, "Johnny's." Johnny was where everybody got their taps put on. Mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, "Where well, they changed it from Empire Market?" I'm like, "What's the name of the big grocery store?" And he's looking at me like, "Man, Empire Market." You know, so now yeah. I know he's from, and he grew up only four blocks from me. Mm. So that was one of the, probably one of the few people I ever knew from my neighborhood versus somebody saying, oh man, I'm from um, Inglewood. Or, okay, he's been, you're from Inglewood, California. You're not from LA. So when you say the riots and everything, I'm like, that's where I grew up. I went to the military. They burned up the place that I signed up to go to the military. I'm right there in it. You can't say I'm from, well, you can't say anything you want, but you can't be from, 
you know, Ventura, or you can't be from uh, Gardena, talking about you from LA, even though Gardena's right there, mm -hmm. it still makes, it right. makes a difference when you're from that. If right. you say, man, I'm even with family blood, okay, you know, yeah. that means something. Yeah. But you can't say I'm from Culver City, nah, get at it, which is really, literally, yeah. right, literally right, 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 right there. Right, right there, so. right there. But because the, the name itself, puts you in a different demographic. It just a different does. experience. It does. It yeah. does because Your experience you know, is different for sure. And so if you went, if you didn't go to like Jefferson High School, Lock High School, which was the black high school when we was growing up, and you go, okay, we, we played Jordan Downs in the in the three A in the three A championship, right? Mm -hmm. We beat Jordan, which is all black school. I'm at Taft, mixed school. Jordan dudes start knocking niggas out at Taft. Mm -hmm. I just flipped it. Get on, get them niggas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not gonna get beat down with them <laughs> real dudes, but I can still fake it because I'm a black guy. Code switch. That's what I got, man. <laughs> it says so, when I saw so my line, line. <laughs> when I saw what was happening, I I switched to Jordan down, man. Get them cats, blah 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 blah, and I'm like. Whew, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, that, demographics mean a lot in I, how you raise kids. And I, 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 we were talking about it before the camera started rolling, and I was like, kind of questioning the power of television. But now that you mention that, I'm since Boys in the Hood, nigga, I'm still scared to go to cop. <laughs> nigga, I will <laughs> never step foot in cop, even from Boys in the Hood. That shit has been. I've only, gone, I've only gone with family, honestly. <laughs> huh? I've only gone with family and friends. I don't really? know myself. No. Nick, Nick, but I'm like that with any neighborhood I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't if, you like, go, I don't if, you like, if you go into a certain area in those, because there's a lot of parts sometimes, sometimes it's like there's areas in certain neighborhoods where it's like, oh, you, you solid over here. But sometimes you like, yeah, if you go into a certain part or certain streets, it's like, you better even get out your car unless you know right. somebody in that area. Like, mm -hmm. I was, in, uh, for you, like I was in the city and I was in one of the project, one way in, one way out. Mm -hmm. I'm nervous because mm -hmm. all I know is that once right. I get in, how am I getting out? Now, I have been in a bunch of, you know, projects, mm -hmm. but that was a project I wasn't familiar with. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, man, leave the keys in the car, leave it running, go do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm in the driver's seat, because if anything pop off, I'm running everybody over here. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I'm already thinking, <laughs> how am I getting out of here? Not even in park, is it ready? Yeah. I'm already ready, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so he's like, so of course he's like. And a nigga from the valley not thinking like that. That's what you're saying. <laughs> no, that's, not, that's not true. No, I'm just playing. No, I'm just no, saying. Dude. <laughs> 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 the dude told me, he goes, but you grew up in L.A., just so, like Richmond, yeah. Oakland. That stuff still... I know. I, I never went to Richmond. Man. And, unless you were going to get them suits, I right. never went to Richmond. <laughs> right. Because Richmond, they would shoot the damn uh, street lights out so it's dark. Mm -hmm. I'm not from Richmond. I don't know Richmond. I'm like, I did not go to Richmond. Mm -hmm. uh, certain parts of Oakland, I went when my people was there. Right. My yeah. godbrothers and them, but... Just walking but around, just going around no. I didn't. No. I didn't like being nowhere. I was with I JT know. and them, and they was. Yeah. I stopped at a store, and I'm like, "We stopping right here?" And I'm looking, because all I know right. is, in the, the witching hour, shit can jump off. Right. And he's like, "Man, I'm just gonna run in here," and he's looking at me, you know, and I'm like, "Man, all right, hurry up, bro," because I'm so used to shit jumping off. Mm -hmm. No matter where I go, I'm not comfortable. Yeah. Unless it's where I'm going, which yeah. means I ain't putting myself in harm's way. Right. If we all go out. And you go, man, I'm going to take you to, I'm like, yo, man, I'm, I'm, you stop, I'm going to bump into you, because I'm close. Like, if anything happened, hey, man, I'm with him. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go with me, and I'm like, man, relax, like, we have to compliment or something. I'm like, yeah. bro, ain't nobody going to do nothing to you out here. You still got your head on the swivel, because that's not where you're from. Yeah. So right. wherever you go, that's what you're subject to, that area. And right. if somebody don't vouch for you, mm -hmm. you subject it's just, to be it's just, I don't know these people. Like, when I went to Hammond, which, if you know Hammond, Indiana, nigga, that's the worst of the worst. It's like Hammond and Gary. And yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So I went out there with my boys, and I knew immediately. I knew yeah. immediately. Hey, he's like, you gonna stay at my cousin's house? I said, all right, bet. We walk into that apartment complex. There is a weight bench on everybody's street. I was like, oh, this is, this is the yard. This is, this is, <laughs> this is where we're at. Because, and they was like, you and us, you good. But I'm like, I don't know anybody. Right. I don't know. So y'all stop leaving me. Yeah. Right. You good. I don't know these people. Yeah. Right. Like, Yo, you know everybody on every corner. Y'all didn't dap it up and you used to sell to him, whatever. I don't know these things. Yeah. Right. So and, like, and because you're the outside dude, right. like you said, one I forgot what twenty guys was saying. I went to I went to Memphis, Tennessee and opened my mouth and man the whole room stopped. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they you know, I I they like, Where you from? And I'm like, I'm California. Ooh! And then I'm looked at as proper. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't even to myself, I'm like, I can't understand what the hell y'all saying. Mm -hmm. Y'all talk like y'all ain't. 
But to them, they understood it. For me, I'm proper. And then they didn't get the whole, you know, yeah, you want another nigga. You know, yeah. you think you're up here. No, I don't think anything. You know, right. You mm-hmm. think you're better than us. And I was like, oh, man, here we go. You know, man, come outside. And I'm like, why? You know what I mean? Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. hell no. Yeah. I'm like, come so outside. Like, all, the, all the male cousins and everything. It was just like a little weekend. All the male cousins outside. I'm in there with all the women. Because I'm like, I'm not going out with this nigga. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they going to church yeah. set me up with. You know what I mean? But then it's like they looking at you like you're different, but no, I'm not. I just came out here, you know. And and, and a couple of my dudes tried to go out and branch out, you know, back in the 80s when they was doing the drug thing and they got killed. You know, trying to set up shop in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. My boy Jaja got killed. Uh, my, my dude got killed. She blew, blew his head off. You know, my homegirl, she got, her dude took the drug money, went to Vegas and tried to double it up and he lost. And by the time they came back, they cut their head off. It was just some crazy yeah. shit. So again, you know, it's so it's yeah. just crazy. No matter yeah. where you go, no matter what you do. So for me, I wanted my kids to have at least a chance to walk out and breathe without worrying about what car is coming down the street. But also too, you grew up in that like that was like the eighties. Yeah, that was yes. time <laughs> crap. Yes. That was like, on that. that yeah, that was like in that particular time that, that was, was snowfall in real life. Yeah, eighties, nineties, LA right. was just just was like probably legit scary. Right. Like right. energy. And then, like in the two thousands, even like now, it's like it's it still has its part, but it's like for the most part, a lot of the kids are even they, they, even certain areas they even wear certain colors still when they ain't tripping. It's not they're not necessarily set tripping as much as they were back then, right? right. You know what I'm saying? And right. it, but it's just like yo, yeah, the eighties is also just a whole different ball. It, 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 it was because it was this. It, it, it went from fist fights to you know bats or whatever, and then when the guns came on the scene. It was just, you know, like 38s. You know, you might have a, someone that had a 9 million. What's that time? Uh, 105. Oh, but I'm okay. talking about 5 of the third. Yeah, right I, thought we, I thought it was way longer. I didn't know it was on the album. Oh, it is 105. You know, so, so, so the gunplay and everything came in, and it did take over. Mm-hmm. But that's what I wanted to keep them away from. Right. I wanted them to be able to get up. Because, like I said, from the time I'm like 11, every day I walk out, I hope I make it home. Yeah. For like eight years straight, you think you can die at any moment. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want that pressure on them. I wanted them yeah. to be able to say, you know, I want to be. Now, I would have preferred to be in the valley, but then there was a different element because you're still talking about 70s, a lot of racial shit. Mm-hmm. You know, my my dad and me was on his bike and Hell's Angels was coming. Man, mm-hmm. we had to throw everything down, jump on his bike, and they had 750. They had, you know, they could not run it. Mm-hmm. But he was like, You hear that? And I'm like, No, get on the bike, hurry up. And you just see a bunch of Hells Angels coming. My dad gets on the bike. Bah! So when I got into my own bike thing, yeah. I went to a Hells Angels um, barbecue for whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Oh, God. I go to the line of where did them to feed me. Mm-hmm. And he goes, What you have, brother? I paused. Like, well, you went to a Hell's Angels barbecue on purpose? Yeah. And my dad said, don't do it. Don't go. They're this. They're that. Okay? Yeah. So I went, because I'm looking at who I went with. You know, it, was, it wasn't it was just black. I was with me, my own boy, you know, a white dude, and I had a Mexican guy, you know. So when we go through the line, that was the best place I ever had with food. Because mm-hmm. they was piling me up. Yeah. I've been to their clubhouse. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh snap, man! I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know it was like uh, allowing it. Like no, 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 no. Okay, so Sonny Barger and the, and, the, and the brother that just died from the uh, Iron Soul, uh, Soul Brothers, they were best friends. The only reason why black dudes didn't join Hell's Angels because you did join Black Club. Mm. Sonny Barger said black guys could have joined the club, they just didn't want to because they had their own thing. Okay. But Sonny Barger and, and dude from Soul Brothers was like this. They, it was a car club, actually. Mm-hmm. Then he said, why don't you make it into a bike club? Yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. So I've been to uh, a Hells Angels clubhouse. And it, it's nothing like it would have been. Like so, like you guys are saying, when we when I grew up in the 80s, yeah. the, the Hells Angels back then was a little different. Mm-hmm. Hells Angels, nah, these guys are doctors. You know, they, 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 they just patch. But yeah. they not, you know, not all of them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So... Um, you again, diversity, uh, time changes a lot of things. And once I left there, I called my dad. I go, I survived. And he goes, well, What was it like? <laughs> and I'm like, Man, it was cool. They gave me food and everything. He's like, What? Because his version of Hell's Angels mm-hmm. 20 years later is not the same. Same thing like you guys were saying mm-hmm. about growing up in the neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. So it is different, but you can't tell the OG guy or who was there in the 60s that Inglewood is a cool place when we couldn't cross over Western. No, no, Inglewood now, that's what we were looking for. 
Right. But, but, you know, because I got the stadium. Everything is down there. So right. we're trying to get in early before. before yeah. Because the yeah. houses are trying to go. Oh, crazy. no. It, 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 was it was already. We were looking. Yeah. I was like, this yeah. is for a two bedroom? Yeah. Because they had the stadium. Two stadiums. Yes. Two new stadiums and the Clippers trying to go back to the forum. And I'm like, Eaglewood is insane. Yeah, and, but so for the people that stayed and kept their house, oh, they they they, they, they played that house. Well, the problem is a lot of people, black people, be selling. Yeah, they you sell, keep, you sell too but quick. They sell to get yeah. out and do something before else. Before it goes, they never had no money before. So what, like, oh, you give me what your happens house? is all the grandparents are dying, and the right. kids are just like, the kids don't care. Me, yeah, you give me five of jeans for this, I'm out of here. Where yeah. the grandparents are like, no, you keep them, keep, keep the house, always keep right. until you this you can pass it down. And they're like, I don't care about passing nothing now. We're gonna move to Lancaster. Right, Lancaster, Palmdale, shitty now. Exactly. Well, actually, because they, 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 I can't remember which project that they actually tore down, like regentrification. Yes, yes. I can't remember which one it yes. was, but they told everybody, you know, some money, move out to Lancaster, yep. and they yep. ended up building that up. So, like you said, now Lancaster took, you moved from, Gar- not Gardena, I can't remember the name. neighborhood it was, too. They gave them, like, all the, like, little balcony. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they, they all moved, moved out, yep. and they took that element mm-hmm. to, to Lancaster, Palmdale, yep. and then they turned around and turned that into a nice neighborhood. But you can't mm-hmm. take a person from their element and think just because you moved on the block in Antioch or whatever, you're going to be Like, dead. some some of those people were just like, no. So we got it. it was like, we got the voucher. We're going to move to Lancaster. We're going to make sure we get a nice house, and we're going to do it right. Because Lancaster and Palmdale... There's like a side of Lancaster that's horrible, that's the hood. Right. And there's a side of Lancaster that's like. Nice ass, big houses, and all that. Yeah. And the same with Palmdale. And it's like some people from LA that, that got those vouchers, they were just like, nah, we got the chance to do it right. And they went to Lancaster and they did it right. Right. But some people just like, like you said, they, they, they didn't get, they were just like, it's the same shit. Let's move out here, do what we did out there. And we and move back, we got, now we got a new clientele. And because new clientele. that's what they really and A little, bit, a little bit of money, yeah. Right. I can make yeah. that, you know. It, and it was so funny because that's what happened even in the eighties. You know, you can sell your little dime bag, you know, <clears throat> but then you come out to the valley and these guys had better weed, mm-hmm. better dope. You know what I mean? And you're like, shit. So then you go home, you're like, man, I couldn't sell nothing because the competition, what they got, you got this dirt weed and they got that shit that gets you you hot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you just sell your own shit, then it's you selling out. No, I'm not selling out. Your product can't match. You're not gonna take some city dope, take it to the valley and think the valley people are gonna be like, nigga, this ain't no guy. Dude got way better dope, so because his father grows it. They're <laughs> <laughs> getting it straight you know, over the backyard. So <laughs> you know, you, 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 so then when you do that, then you become that dude. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you go to the valley, and all of a sudden now my money and my product ain't good. No, it's not that it ain't good, bro. I can't compete because one, everybody's doing it, and you got better weed, you got better dope, you got better everything out there. You know, the quality's better. You know, and then it turns into like, oh, here come the right here. You don't want to sell for me. It ain't that I don't want to sell, man. I can't get no sales because mm-hmm. you got that dirt weed and they got that good shit. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, I know the difference. You know what I mean? So if I know the difference, you don't think the customers know the difference? You know what I mean? Come on, man. Mm-hmm. So you had to deal with that crap. You know, you're trying to be like them. You know, even when I got home, I think I, I, think I said, uh, what's that word? Was it? I think it was gnarly or something I said. My dad almost wanted to beat shit out of me. Because he was like, what did you say? And I was, I can't remember what the word was. It might have been gnarly. gnarly. It might have been gnarly. But whatever it was, my dad wasn't happy. Not far out. It's far out, man. man. You don't totally talk too like that. that. You don't talk like that in my house. Totally <laughs> Trying to get my TV? You're like, no, I'm just looking at TV. My dad be like, the game is on. Oh man, man. <laughs> the game is on. Bro, <laughs> everybody that came to our house, my dad would be like, watch that thing. And I'm like, mm. why? You know? And he was like, nigga, steal. And I'm like, but those are my friends. You know, they just coming over, whatever. And, and, and man. I'm yeah. nine. I'm still a team. I'm a, a big bat TV. Big I'm gonna carry this. <laughs> my, my. And he thought he had a brother stereo system, which was real nice at the time. Everybody else usually had a little small little record player, blah blah. But he had the high end shit, and it was white. And I remember two speakers and it was loud and everything. And every time people would come up, he crank it down so they would know how loud it was. I'm like, why do you do that? Mm-hmm. Because I don't want them to know what I got. Niggas always trying to, you know. 
And I was PTSD. like, PTSD. Oh man, bro, this PTSD. is oh, man. so shit. So in terms <laughs> of uh, you kind of fulfilling your goal of like getting your kids out into like a, a, a diverse area and uh-huh. suburbs and all that stuff, and um, and like having that plan. I have a cocaine habit, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I was like, how do you take to sort of, you know, your kids kind of criticizing your parenting now? Um, well, it's a hot, it's a hot topic right now. I'm pretty sure you guys are discussing it a little bit, right?